Hey everyone, welcome back to another roundtable discussion. Welcome to 2021. And today we're going to talk about stock market valuations as of now in January 21 around Asia and the US. So we have five markets that we want to cover today. Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, China and the US. And the reason why we want to do this is to find out you know how expensive or cheap these markets are. We're going to have a look at some of the valuation ratios for these uh, different markets and why we pick certain ones for certain markets as well and of course over the last you know over the past year or so the different markets have run up differently so we want to have yeah. a look at how far uh, some of these markets have gone up some of them some of them haven't really gone up as much as well uh, and then we're going to see where they are in terms of valuation all right so let's yeah. just start off with our home market of Singapore so that's where we're from and what do you guys think about Singapore and how it's been over the last year and where it, where it is right now Yep. So if you look at the Singapore uh, PB ratio, we can see that the 10 years PB ratio is about 1.24 times. So right now they are at about one time. So they are generally still trading below their average book value. So actually the Singapore market is generally still cheap. So why am I using uh, PB ratio instead of P ratio is because if you look at the SDI, the top 10 of them is actually accounts about 67% of the whole SDI. And uh, 8 out of 10 of them is actually asset type of companies like your banks, your real estate. So that's why it makes more sense to use PB ratio for STIs. So you can see right, right now they are trading below their average. So I would think that the Singapore market is generally still cheap right now, mm -hmm. especially in uh, Singapore and also there's other small stocks that are still cheap also. So what you're saying is I think a lot of people are familiar with the PE ratio, right? Yep. And that's kind of like the most common valuation method, but you're going to use price to book for Singapore because what you're saying is that yep. a lot of the companies that are in the STI are asset heavy companies yep like the banks or REITs yeah. and real estate companies and there's a much better valuation to use PB as compared to PE compared yeah. to PE yeah. Yeah. generally these companies they are a lot heavier in terms of assets mm -hmm. so it's better to look at their book value so mm -hmm. price to book would be a better measurement yep. mm -hmm. and then it kind of give us a quick indication whether the market is expensive mm -hmm. or cheap all yeah. right. So at this point, you're saying it's it's relatively cheap at this point in time. Singapore hasn't really gone up much yeah. yes, yep. past the pandemic, unlike the US, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's cheap, do you think there are opportunities right now in Singapore? Oh, definitely. So I think the retail sectors are still being affected, especially those uh, retail REITs are still being affected. And mm -hmm. also banks still, there's op really are still opportunity, yeah. even though they have recently uh, run up a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Would and you, yeah. certain sectors like REITs in uh, office, I think generally uh, there's a concern that uh, the work from home trend, right? So yeah. office generally, they have not really uh, recovered or gone back to their early days before the COVID-19. So that's one area they can look at if you still believe that, you know, uh, work from home is kind of like over-exaggerated because of the current pandemic. It's definitely over-exaggerated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So once uh, we go through this uh, pandemic, I think yeah. uh, flexi working is going to be in, stay in place. So yep. there's an area where you know, businesses will still need the office space, but of course they may need to customize it. Some companies may downsize it. Some companies that are doing well, they're definitely going to expand it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So And retail is like what Victor mentioned. So this is a sector where I think we're continue to do pretty well. Uh, of course, it depends on which country you're looking at. If you look in Singapore, yeah. I think generally we are all social animal, right? So yeah, we can, right. I think the crowds are still there in yeah. Singapore for shopping mall. So mm -hmm. there's if one- If there's no shopping get. mall in Singapore, I don't know how you're going to survive, man. <laughs> yeah, Victor can survive, I can survive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really have I'll to go shopping home. mall. It's very yeah. boring to stay at home. Yeah. Even now home. we are under phase three, I think generally the malls are yeah. very crowded. I mean, yeah. look yeah. at Vivo City, yeah. so many people, man. Okay, yeah, yeah. Vivo City is packed though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's for Singapore. I think there's still opportunities in this market because yep. um hasn't really recovered fully since yep. the pandemic. So let's move on to Malaysia. So where is Malaysia right now? So if you look at uh Malaysia P E ratio right now, the market P is about twenty two point eight time. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty high, but then you must know that the index constitute actually have those glove companies that push mm -hmm. up the index. Yeah. Because the glove companies have really performed uh, very well during this pandemic so they actually push push out the index and on top of that of course Malaysian have their own government EPF keep buying back their blue chip companies so th that's why the, uh, Malaysians index have not been dropping for the past few years even though there's a lot of uh, crisis around the corner but then if you look at all those uh, smaller companies that are not in the index they're actually still cheap right now mm -hmm. like you can look at your those like uh, the same thing your retail your retail reads right 
or your retail companies like your Padini, your retail REITs like your Sunway REITs, REITs also yeah. still down and all, the, all this like mm-hmm. Pavilion is still down and so because uh, I think Malaysia especially KL they rely also a lot on the tourism and tourism is not bad yet you know okay, so what I'm hearing is that it's not just enough to have a look at the index and go oh it's cheap or expensive yep. you have a look at the companies within the sector the sector the sector and yeah. index because it's kind of like skewed at this yeah. point because you know the glove companies have gone up so much yeah. over the past year because of the pandemic and then they've like create a huge portion of the Malaysian index at this point yeah. Yeah. so you could look like oh, it's not that cheap and then you kind of like miss um, the forest for the trees and then but then you figure that you're saying you, you drill down there's still opportunities in Malaysia because you know, some yeah. parts have not really recovered Yep. Yeah. Right. But of course, their, their opportunity is not as much as in Singapore. Lah. Singapore okay. have much more opportunity mm. right now. Lah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that's for Malaysia. And let's move on to another you know, Asian economy, which is Hong Kong. So yeah. where is Hong Kong right, right now? Okay. Hong Kong, I think uh, right now, if we use the matrix price to book ratio, currently they are still trading below the 10 years average. Uh, they have been recovering for the last few months. Uh, but the reason why I use price to book again uh, is because Hong Kong, I think the constituents, bulk of it actually are made up of financial companies mm-hmm. like banks. And the other part also actually made up from a property and construction company. Okay, So they made up more than 50%. So it makes more sense to use uh, price, price to book, book yep. than price to earn earnings ratio okay so so they are still below where the average mm-hmm. in terms of price to book ratio for the last 10 years okay mm-hmm. so there are a lot of opportunities that you can still look at generally property counters are still struggling and because hong kong retail actually has almost dried up in terms of tourist arrivals mm-hmm. uh, since the uh, political crisis and there were a lot of riots in 2019 second half mm-hmm. right then 2020 we have COVID 19 and I think they are in a very bad, bad shape. So they're all built in now. So if you're still confident that Hong Kong will come back, or once the economy starts to open up, COVID is gone, people will start to go back to Hong Kong, then I think that sector will do well, right? In office or retail. Right? Generally, these two sectors actually were down. Sounds very similar yeah. to Singapore in some Yeah, ways. in a yep. way. And they have yeah. a lot of banks also listed there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, the but banks are also banks are down. real cheap, you know. So, <laughs> so there's still question mark on the assets that they're having. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right. So those sectors for shoes, it's very similar to Singapore yep. in a way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the way you would approach that particular market. Kind of look in the same areas of uh, opportunities that you would do so in Singapore. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so let's have a look at China's index. So we're looking at Shanghai. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. So, so if you look at Shanghai Stock Exchange Composite Index, uh, I think basically they kind of capture thousand air hour companies in this uh, index itself. So that kind of like makes sense for us to use the earnings because they, even though there are some cyclical companies that were down, they will be average up by those companies that are doing well, like uh, Mount Tai. Mm-hmm. So one of those companies that have been doing very very well. Right, so Shanghai, we look at the average P ratio for the last 10 years, they are already above the average actually. So mm-hmm. they're kind of like slightly on the expensive side, but we won't probably be looking at a lot of opportunities over there. Right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of companies have, have gone up at the in terms of prices. So I think yeah. the thing about China is that they have a very strong domestic economy. Consumption, and even yeah. though like yeah, COVID hit the country first, but they really did a tremendous job at trying to like just contain that situation. Yeah. And then because of that, a lot of their tech companies also did really well because of that. So that all the you know e commerce was a huge had a huge boost in China yeah. as well. And because of that domestic, you know, engine that they have, yeah. a lot of the companies just really recovered very quickly. After, you mean during uh, the pandemic and all that? Yeah, I mean, we can cover China, but that we can't buy Asia. <laughs> 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 so the only way we can do buy those companies that are listed in uh, China is through Hong, Hong Kong, Kong yeah. Stock Connect. Yeah. All right. So Malta is one of them. They can actually mm-hmm. buy through Hong Kong. Yeah. Right. So, but in general, I think China market is slightly on the expensive side. So I'll probably be looking at companies over there. Except for maybe Alibaba. Uh, Alibaba is uh, actually listed in Hong Kong. So yeah, I know. It's but it's, it's kind of like when we are like China. Yeah. Right? Yes. So yeah. we just did Alibaba. Yeah, we did, a, we did an Alibaba. <laughs> we very, just the last video actually. So yeah, if you missed it, you can just go back and go watch check it. Go check it out. Yeah. yeah. So, but the China itself, the index is... It's on the high side. On the high side general, at yeah. this point in time. Yeah. All right. So, that's for China. Um, let's go on to the US right across halfway around the world. So, yes. tell us about the US market. So, US is very sec- exciting because we have Tesla. It goes up <laughs> <laughs> seven times, eight Tesla. times last year. Yeah. And today's so, news was that um, Elon Musk is the richest guy in the world. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. 
I should start, yeah, I cannot start believe that. Uh, an electric scooter yeah. company and try my luck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a great, great, great yeah, car, and they managed car to, company. Don't get me they wrong. managed to get yeah. into index, right? Just yeah. a, a few weeks ago. Yeah. 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 So actually, the S&P index is actually a, a, a great index because it get, got a great mix of companies. Mm. Yeah. So generally, you have all the big tech companies like Apple, Amazon, Alphabet that's driving the index. So generally, we focus more on price to earnings ratio rather than price to book yeah. ratio mm-hmm. yeah. uh, of course there are cyclical co- companies inside too there are airlines and everything but most mostly it's just uh, can, can be averaged out by yeah, all because it's a 500 companies, companies right yeah, so many yeah. unlike like sectors and all that. Singapore yeah. you only have like 30 constituents yeah. in the index it's very yeah. specific. specific our economy is not yeah. as diverse as the US yeah. 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 yeah so it's more dynamic over there mm-hmm. so then right now it's trading at 38.2 times right uh, <laughs> way above Whoa. the, the okay. historical <laughs> average of 21 times uh. so, so okay. it's very expensive I think partially is because the, the earnings has dropped yep. so then mm-hmm. and why, uh, valuation has gone up yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's also driven by yeah. low interest rate and uh, liquidity in the market yeah. so and of course the Fed of course expect that they're going to keep interest rate low for the next couple of years and let mm. inflation run high for the mm-hmm. next couple of years as well above 2% so it's very important that uh, we look to uh, assets that can generate more than 2% so don't mm-hmm. so that we don't lose out on uh, purchasing yeah. power mm-hmm. and not to mention of course the market has been driven by a strong IPO market last year right I mean, IPO was yeah. uh, uh, it was over uh, four, over 400 four, yeah. $35 billion yeah. so it's, it's much higher than the record highs in 2014 of uh, mm-hmm. around $279 billion I read a stat so, somewhere yeah. that the number of IPOs in the US market in 2020 the last time it was that high was during the dot-com bubble yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's that's actually could be as you know i mean take what you want from it yeah they <laughs> actually outbeat the dot-com bubble yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah so it's like that was the last i mean that was not that wasn't the last the last was in 2007 2008 but there was a there was a bubble in two, 2000 as well yep so so are we in the bubble region so now? Yeah. yeah that's a big, big I mean, question i think we, sh- we also need to understand like like what can he say you know because the earnings of the s p 500 companies are are depressed right now some of them yeah, yeah some yeah, of them was, right yeah. but during that that point of time where the bubble was there mm-hmm. all companies are making their earnings yeah record earnings and yet the valuation ran up very high. So so I think there's still a case by case basis when we look into the market. Yeah, I think you need to look at right. the bubbles because I think during the dot-com bubble, yeah. one of the reasons why the PE was so high is because a lot of those internet companies yeah. weren't actually making a lot of money because yeah. it was a very new industry yeah. at that point in time. So they were valuing them almost like, I don't know, maybe how you value some of the electric mm. car companies. Yeah. Not Tesla. Okay, I know <laughs> a lot of Tesla fans. <laughs> yeah. uh, but some of them are like some pre-revenue companies. Yeah. It's, it's almost crazy in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was a par- parallel yeah. back in 2000. But so yeah. yeah, but if you look back at 2000, the interest rate was very high. That's why the, the, the market was overheated. But right now, your interest rate is very low. So actually, okay. the interest rate determined everything of the valuation of the market right now. Yeah. So actually, there's a, yeah. a few factors together. So yeah, but yeah. At least right now, the equities actually is more attractive as mm. compared to the 10-year treasury bonds. Right? Yeah. The 10-year okay. treasury is around mm. 1%. And then if you were to yeah. invert the PE right mm. now, the, it has an earnings yield of about 2.6%. So, so it still beats it's still, the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, still, the yeah, bonds. Yeah, it yeah, still makes sense bonds. to look yeah. at the stock yeah. market. market. Yeah. 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 So right. it's like a confluence of factors that you need to put into account before you think, oh, is there a bubble or anything? Because every bubble is kind of different in a way yeah. Yeah. and you can have a look, like have a look at it and kind of understand because there's no way we can make a prediction about whether there's a bubble I mean we can we don't know whether it's possibly there's a bubble but we can't make we, a prediction of where it's going to yeah. go we don't know when it's going to pop yeah, yeah. it could That's even go much yeah. higher yeah. for I don't know how many years yeah. but, but it, it, yeah. it's all depends on the, I think the interest rate because the, the interest rate will change everything about the valuation now right if okay. the Fed were to like one year or two two years down the road start to increase the interest rate actually okay. market the valuation change, yeah. does not determine whether we invest in something or not yeah. it's yeah. just yeah. that opportunities are scarce opportunity like, yeah. cost Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you gonna put your money? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking right. of this, I think U.S. market generally, I think there are very little opportunities now. Yeah. I mean, yeah we are not really very active in yeah. uh, U.S. market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because of the high valuation, mm-hmm. so uh, it's harder to find uh, companies to invest over there now. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but compared to Asia, Asia is there's a lot of opportunities so in shift. Asia. Yeah. So actually, yeah. you know, back in March and April, obviously we were looking at the U.S. a yeah. huge l- a yeah. whole lot. Yep. Yeah. Right at that point in time. And because, now it's gone yeah. up. We could kind of like, and now people are rushing in. Yeah, yeah correct. Because during the COVID, I think the 
PE average for the S and P five hundred dropped below the average. It was yeah, like almost, fifteen or sixteen times. Yeah, right. yeah, but the yeah. average was twenty. You know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you do check out our, I think our videos or our articles at that point in time, March, April, twenty twenty, we're talking a lot about it actually. Yeah. yeah. And if you were reading or following us then. That would yeah. have been a pretty good time. So uh, remember hint, to subscribe hint, to hint, our hint, channel. But anyway, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> now if you you see a lot of people, un, you know, uncles and aunties or whatever, you know, rushing into the stock market, that looks, looks a bit. Uh, um, I mean, everyone yeah, is uh, rushing into the stock market yeah, right now. So that's right. kind of like it's kind of worrying actually because yeah. investing seems to be very easy now. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's yeah. you know from people that yeah. I know who doesn't invest in the past so all of a sudden become yeah. a stock expert yeah. I wouldn't say they it's call the themselves board. experts yeah. but they kind of like post <laughs> their results, results yeah. on uh, Facebook yeah, or Instagram yeah. hey look I made this much money yeah. and that kind of gives you an idea yeah. of, oh, okay what's happening right and now and every yeah. five people you ask three of them will own Tesla <laughs> 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 Tesla is a great company yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. 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 anyway we're yeah. just waiting for yeah, the right but it's a great company just waiting for the right price actually I like the car actually Yeah, I love the car it's actually my favourite car honest honest but anyway so I think we've come all five markets um, we've wanted to cover today so Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Hong Kong, China and the US I think these are the main companies uh, markets that we look at ourselves uh, and we shared with, the, with you our valuations and the basis for those valuations as well where, where, think the, where we think the opportunities are so this is just a discussion to just give you some ideas of what you can look out for uh, and then you know have a look and see what you can find for your own investment you know portfolio and all that as well so once again thank you for watching uh, my name is Adam this is Victor thank you this is Rusman yeah. and Kenny thank you we're all from the fifth person you are the fifth person joining us here in this round table discussion if you liked it please hit the like button we have a lot more uh, round table discussions coming up as well uh, subscribe to our channel and we want to make sure that they come uh, as fresh as they come to you and again if any comments or questions put them in the comment section and we would love to have a conversation with you so with that thank you so much thank you guys yeah thank you thank right. you thank you for joining us and we'll see you around see you see you